Afrobeat Intelligence Podcast. Afrobeat Intelligence, democratizing African music. Cheers, 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 man. Yeah, what's up? Um, why are we why are we drinking this? Why do you why did you make us drink this? Because like Glenn is the best, you know, and. Uh, after eating jollof and beef with dodo, the best thing to sort of like take it down is, is Glenn. And newsflash, I don't think there's, there's uh, in one of my songs, I was like, okay, I, I don't want to say the brand, but you can't find Glenn in heaven. So whilst you're here, Drink. But this is like very synonymous with what people consider to be. This is very synonymous with what people consider to be luxury. A bit. Like what? Uh, Glenn. Glenn. Yeah, yeah. it's luxury. It's just, it's, it's a luxurious brand. I make Afro luxury music. And when was the first when was the first time you when was the first time you discovered that this was this was something you were about, luxury. When when did he hit you that this was your thing? To be honest, it just it just continues. Okay. You know, from I think one of the things very early on, like if I can remember, like high school, I I shout out to all my boys, Home Science yeah. Association. Like I quickly realized so early that you know, that there was difference in cars. You know, I quickly realized that the, uh, I think it was, it was called the Baby Benz. Yeah. You know, and on my streets where I lived in Sungwater, it was my job every morning to go open the tap at um, 6 a.m., to go open the tap so people on the street can come fetch water. So I quickly realized that there was a difference between me and my family in the house, in our own compound. I think four bedroom, three sitting rooms, one BQ, probably like four cars. You know, and my mom owned the house across the road and we, we owned, she owned like, the family owned the house next to us. Yeah. Like I quickly realized there was a difference between me and my friends I played football with on the street. Oh, yeah. Because when we're going to school, you know, I'll wear my home science uniform and I will get dropped off by the driver. Yeah. But then they'll just walk to Asarudin or Igoma there. And even though we in my school during break time, there were boys like Oputa, Badua, Bolu Alabi, yeah. that were ballers, you know. They would buy more meat pie and donut. Um, and I felt like, you know, they had, they had more kiosk money than me. Yeah. But back home, I had more money to buy, you know, if it's Gala, La Casera, or even if it's Balling at the Aboki spot. Yeah. Say, so, yeah, I, I got you. You know, so I quickly sort of like realized that there was a difference in... A disparity. A disparity. And my best friend then, Ikena, Ikena was living with his uncle um, with five other kids in a one-bedroom apartment. Wow. I remember going to his house and then seeing my house. So realizing that there was disparity and also realizing that I wanted some of that. Okay. You know, I wanted like, I like, you know, I, I like it. Like some years ago, I didn't eat sushi. Yeah. You know, and I didn't eat rare meat, but now I'm eating tuna ceviche. I'm like, "Mm, this is good. (laughs) You know, so, and I think it's like fruits of your labor. Yeah. 
So I see it more as reward. It's not like constant chase. Say I won't get all the money in the world. It's just that, you know, the fine things of life then sort of like are fruits of your labor. And if you can enjoy it, it's a blessing because you could spend your whole life chasing, 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 chasing and not enjoy it. And then you're in the hospital or your hospital bed and you're like, it's time to go, TTG. So every time you get to enjoy some nice cup of Glen, eat some nice jollof, you know, and it doesn't even have to be super expensive, but every time you use your money to buy something that you've earned, you should you should celebrate. So cheers. Cheers again. Cheers to upliftment, yes. to hard work. <laughs> to success. Success. Thank you. Okay. And this 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 realization that you are driven to the good things of life. The, mm the beauty in existence. Is there something that contributes to your fuel? Is there something that fuels you? Freedom. Freedom is like the biggest thing for me. Freedom in what sense? Freedom, like, and like, when we bring it back to the music, it's like, I want to be able to make music when I want, release it when I want, how I want, Decide, okay, I don't want to put out music this month or I don't want to put out music this year or I don't want to take the show. I don't don't think there's as many artists in Nigeria like me that have returned people's money from shows. Like, I take the money and I pay you back and I'm like, yeah. I was even say, okay, do you want compensation? Not because I didn't turn up. Because you paid me today, you want to book me. And then I wake up tomorrow morning. I'm like, okay, I don't. I actually don't want to do the show. So it's not like you've advertised and I'm now turning it down. No, it's like I don't want to do it again. So just the freedom, that freedom is what drives me. Freedom of creativity, the freedom. I remember growing up and, you know, my mom would say, as long as you're under my roof, you must do this, this, this. And so I wanted to get out of the roof so that I can do whatever I want to do. And when did you first feel the sense of freedom? First sense of freedom was when I went to boarding school, I think SS2, home science. Um, So I was finally out of the house. Um, But then it wasn't real freedom because you had the fences. You couldn't go out of school. So... But you got a certain level of freedom by not being within your parents' house. Yeah. So but you had more leeway to function. More more leeway to function, to do my things. And I just like it I just liked to go against the rules. Like they'll say don't relax your hair. Me and my boy K Spike will relax our hair every day. You know, they'll say wear, you know, black shoes, we'll go and wear sneakers. I just wanted to go against so the you, system. So you were anti establishment. <laughs> That's too deep. But, <laughs> but yeah, like anti-establishment in that way of just wanting freedom. And the first time I truly felt free yeah. was when I went to Kwame Nkrumah University in Ghana, 2007. What was different? Because now I was alone. There was no rules. There was no boys hostel, girls hostel. There was no, if you like, your roommate can be your girlfriend. Yeah. Um, my dad just gave me my school fees and my pocket money, everything. Imagine like you're going first day in school, you have your entire sc- school fees for the year and your pocket money for like the whole semester, everything. Mm-hmm. And I could do whatever I wanted to do with it. Like if I want everything I wanted to do, I could, I could just do it. And I could wake up anytime I want go to bed. I could even decide to go to class or not go to class. It was just absolute freedom. Absolute freedom. Yeah. And at what point did you begin to pair freedom with responsibility? Knowing that, yes, you have freedom, but consequences are bound. Because my dad just told me, like, I remember going to school for the first time and my dad said, well, I went upstairs and my dad showed me how much salary he was getting paid. Okay. 
and he and then he showed me my school fees. That was that's a that's a huge, that's a huge hammer to drop on a kid. Yeah, and I was, I was like fifteen going on sixteen, so my dad just let me know. He's like, hey, your school fees is seven thousand dollars per year. My salary is ten thousand dollars. I have four kids. The sister is seven thousand dollars. That's already fourteen thousand dollars. The recommended school fees. The recommended pocket money per semester, with like in our admission form, in our admission letter, they wrote it is thousand dollars. So that's eight thousand, eight thousand. That's fourteen thousand dollars minus your flight. Are you are you getting me? Minus your flight, minus your accommodation. My accommodation, Brunei was like a thousand five hundred dollars a year. So that's already like almost ten k. So my that's 10k and that was his so like 20k that's two months salary just two kids that's not project that's not you're sick that's not so you knew that okay here's the money you're free to do whatever you want but if you go blow the money baba there's no magic like there's no money like it is what it is and so i think that was like the first it, not the first, like, you know, because I'm religious. I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to say I'm religious, but I'm Christian. And, if and you know, going to Sunday school, you know, morning devotion every morning, you do learn from the Christian faith that there's action and there's reaction. Yeah. Even if you're a science student, you know that there's action. To every action, there's a reaction. True. Equal, but... Equal or opposite. I don't forget that thing. To every ac- action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton. There you go. So you know all that, all that stuff. So I knew very early that there's going to be, there's consequences. And when your dad tell, is, is open with you to that extent, you know. So I wasn't under any illusions that my dad was Elon Musk. <laughs> no, I knew. He, he was a sacrifice. Yeah. And so when I went to uni, and I saw boys spending 10K a month. Not like, not based on typographical, based on pocket money from Popsy, based on, hello daddy, I'm about to go, I will go broke, you need to send me money. And, no son of mine must get broke, don't worry, I'm sending you 5,000 tomorrow. And I'll be like, wow, now my papa's salary with the St. Joe's Day ball. And like, people in my school were having cars, First year, second year boys having cars and having all the fine babes in their cars and balling at the parties. So even within that, I knew that, okay. And that's what drove me to entrepreneurship because I wanted to live that life. It wasn't because like, it was because like I just, I wanted to live that life. I wanted, I'm like, why should they be the one? Why should it be only them stunting? I also want to be able to stunt. And I want to be able to say, okay, I'm not going home this holiday. I'm staying in Ghana, not coming back to water. And entrepreneurship was like the, you know, hustling. I want to call it hustle. Hustling was like, okay, I got to hustle. And, you know, between faith, upbringing, family, um, I know I didn't want to do anything that would land me in jail. Yeah. So, yeah, I start throwing parties. Um, I, you know, buy this taxi. Yeah. And yeah, I start hustling. Start selling phones. It wasn't like I was dead broke. Like my, my dad made sure like, yeah, you got your, you got your pocket money. Yeah. And mommy will send you extra. But, Yeah. As an interpret, like even beyond entrepreneurship, how important it is that you, to you and within your story, how important is it to you that you had quite the foundation that was ready to support you as you pursued entrepreneurship? What foundation? Like you getting pocket money. If, uh, if there was no... Would you have done it without that level of support? I don't know, man. I don't know. 
But I feel like if there was no pocket money, I'd have even hustled times two. Okay. Because the pocket money meant that, okay, I have this base to start the hustle from. But my dreams were always bigger than that. Like my dream, like the business idea I'll have will not be business idea of using my $500 to get 550 or six. It will, it will involve me having to go find more money, like 4,000 more to throw this big party. You know, so, so yeah, I think either ways, I think it definitely did help give me that foundation. But either ways, I would have still like, you know, yeah, still, still hustled, maybe even probably more. What did you learn from throwing parties? I learned sort of like the value of entertainment to to life, to human beings. Like the value of amusement. How did it present itself? Because it's like when, because I was throwing parties, quickly I became famous within the school. They used to call me Tosin Swaga. So I became famous and people would want to do things for me. Like even like pe- my People would do my assignment for me. They would sign my attendance for me, even when I'm not in class, just because he's he's famous. He's throwing parties, and we can get favors to, you know, he'll let us into the party because it, I studied engineering. So yeah. the engineering boys are not the like most party boys, right? The, you know, focused doing their, you know. So I was. I was an anomaly in that sense where most boys were very, in my class, were very focused. And I was like doing the other thing. So, yeah. So just seeing that, seeing, seeing the val- seeing the fame that came with it, seeing the favors that came with the fame, seeing how people would, seeing the power I had when you come to my door and I can say, no, you're not getting in. <laughs> You know, and, you know, people who caught me. And that's where, art, you know, upcoming artists in my school then start being my friend so that I can book them, you know, and obviously making money. And we lost, to be honest, like, we lost more money than we made throwing parties. But we still kept on doing it. Like, we loved it. We just loved to, to have this project, see it together. And I didn't stop. I didn't stop at parties. I'm like, okay, now we're doing parties. We need to do an award show. So I, I had the first sort of like social awards yeah. of my university. So I can tell the most. That's where I booked, that's when I booked uh, Sako Day. I booked Out to Bees. I booked One Day Call. Yeah. Um, as a student then. Yeah, as a student then. And I remember, one, you know, One Day Call didn't show up for the, he was in town, but he didn't appear at the show. And people thought like I'd run away with their money and I didn't know that he didn't receive his full money. And um, I remember begging Sako there. It was like maybe $2,500 or less. Begging him that please, even though I don't have, the, I've not paid you complete, please just come on stage. Big shout out to Sako there. He came on stage. He did, like he saved me. He, he saved me by coming on stage. Out to be, that's why till tomorrow, Moogies is my, it's my, it's like more than a friend. It's my brother. Moogies is like, you know what? Fuck this. He came, jumped on stage. So I had our 2 bs I had Sako Deer. I go die and run away with my money. <laughs> I go die if you're hearing this right now. You took money from some Kwame Nkrumah University students and you never showed up. I remember texting him. He never paid me my money. I hope I can find like, the next time I see him and say, yo, bro, you still need to pay me my money. And if he gives it to you, you get I'll it. I'll take it, bro. Because it's your money. And then it's no beef. I mean, like, it's still somewhere at the back of my mind that That's this your guy old, took Your old money. money here. Yeah. You know, I remember booking the genie. Yeah. Booking the genie, booking Jesse Jacks. I told M.I. the other day. Yeah. I met me and M.I. were brand ambassadors for Glenfiddich and we were in we were at the distillery and I'm like, Emma, you don't remember. He was telling me about the first time he saw me. And I was like, no, that's not the first time. I came to your Surulere house. I was outside. I was with Obi Franklin. I was trying to book you. 
one thing led to another. It was supposed to be, it was called Ninja Reunion. If you Google it, there was supposed to be Terry G, Jesse Jacks. Story, 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 story. Then the genie Twitter was just coming out. The genie went and tweet. He's not coming to Ghana. I had to perform. I didn't even know I was a performer. I had to perform. I'd been recording. I had to perform on that show. I remember. And after performing, I ran away. Can you imagine running away from your own <laughs> show? Because boys were going to beat me. Because oh, people yeah. came from all over. I had gotten this reputation at the, as a good event organizer. So people came, spent their money. I ran away. I went into hiding. How, I, how do you come back from that? We we threw another party, Epilogo Externo, in Kumasi. It became massive. It was a shutdown. And we didn't make any money, but we got our dignity back. It was like the bowing out. I just we just knew we had to do shout out to Swagger Boys. That's what we're called. Um, Obima, Pita, Sheung, my 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 best friend brother, um, Osinachi. When you moved to Nigeria, the first time I ever saw you, you were selling phones. Yeah. And somehow you parlayed that into music. When did you stop? When did you finally close down Phone Trader? I don't know. Phone Trader was on for a while and then Laddie and Ladi and Romsey Romsey has his store. It's called The Elect. Yeah. And Laddie, I don't know what Laddie's on is called. And they were running it and then they wanted to do their own thing. Plus, I wasn't involved in the business anymore. So we just had to, we just had to close it because like I wasn't going to be, I'm now doing shows across the world. I'm not going to be coming. I was still going back to Computer Village in between my shows because I hadn't gotten popular in Nigeria. So, I was still able to do it. And some people in the in the market knew that I was singing and I went to do a show. And actually, first time I went to the US, my boy, um, my boy who sold phones, uh, OGM, OGM Gadgets, shout out to my boy. He pretended to be my manager. So now, now phone sellers, they there, they form... Yeah, Mr. Easy's manager, but he did a very good job. Wow. Yeah, I remember 2016, it's March, the, April. It's just this consistent pattern in all of this conversation we've had now. Just a consistent pattern of finding a way to like make it work. Yeah. There's always an angle. There's always something to tweak. There's yeah. always a way to just make it work. Even if I don't know the way it's going to work, it's most times I don't know to be honest. Like, but somehow, somehow, like even if it's last minute, even if it's like there was a time I thought like there was a time legit I thought maybe I was cursed because I was like just trying to do all these hustles and it wasn't clicking. I was enjoying it, but like after some time, it was like ah, she don't swear for me. Maybe make I go do deliverance. Um, but like at the last moment something will just click and it might not even be the plan that i had you see the the um the hat the farmer's hat and the ray band yeah it wasn't like i strategized and say yeah my name is going to be mr easy and i'm going to be carrying this farmer's hat and no i literally went to buy gold in beposo yeah. came back i was in front of my guy's studio my boy was putting up my music on maybe 360 knobs or something and then he said they needed a profile photo. And I was wearing like this, um, this Jamaican singlet. Yeah, I know, I know the picture. And I just went into the studio and they just took like a passport and sent it to them. That's it. It wasn't like there was this well curated, this is what your brand is going to be. And then it just worked. I was just like, okay, this, this, this thing just works. And we kept on. And I just kept on rocking it. And then when it became a thing, I was like frustrated. I was like, ah, which one be this one? We, everybody, they carry farmers out. Like people want, and everybody never wanted me to not carry it. Like I love it for what it did for me and what it represents. You know, it represents me that part, that time of my life and the way I just, you know, my nomadic lifestyle, but I was done with it. And so 
I'm, you know, yeah. And then people just wanted me to always stick with or go back to your farmer's hat. I'm like, man. But it worked. And it yeah, worked it very worked. well. It, it felt, worked very it felt well. like it was, it united, it just gave aesthetic, an aesthetic yeah. face to your music. Because it was real. Okay. It wasn't cooked up. It was my life. Like I was wearing that thing to go into the, to go and buy gold and come refine it and sell. It wasn't like, do you understand? So I think sometimes people can react when something is different. Plus is, you could tell when something is real. Sometimes it connects, sometimes it doesn't. But when it connects, when it's real and it connects, it connects. And this thing, closing down Phone Trader and how it clashed with your artistic, your artistic pursuit. Yeah. How do you know what's worth? Because you say, you talk about hustle and you have had multiple hustles. Yeah. A lot of people would look at music and say, this is not, this is an expression of self. This yeah. is artistic. This is not hustle. Yeah. But then you sort of like left your hustle to yeah. go pursue, pursue this music. Was then that cla- was there no clash? There was. I mean, one of my biggest customers when I was a phone trader was Young Six. Oh. Young Six and his boys, Opus, SD, OT. That's why, like, you hear OT. I mean, volume, because OT was downstairs. They would buy phones from me. Those boys were buying phones. There were some boys in that house that were having different babes every week. And I was there to supply the phones. <laughs> There was one. There was one guy. I don't want to mention his name. He was always breaking his phone anytime his babe vexed him. He's not young six. Don't worry. It was one of young six boys, and I would be there to take the old phone, go and fix the screen, and then sell him a new phone, and then I'll go sell the other phone as London used. <laughs> you get me? So, I mean, I could see. I could see that okay, young six was getting shows. And it was those shows he was using to buy the phones. To buy the phones, I was seeing. You know, I was around artists. I was seeing. You know, it wasn't. And and my friend Cheyenne, she gave me this um, book, Empire State of Mind, that I read for my birthday that year, twenty sixteen or twenty fifteen. And he, and I kind of realized that oh, like this music thing, even though. It was fun for me. It was my only hobby outside of just hustling. It was the only thing I was doing that wasn't attached to a hustle. And then I realized that, oh, this could be something. Like I, I, I saw the big picture and I was like, okay, I want to do this. But, and so I start like, it's like every time I make decisions is I'm almost unsure, 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 unsure. And then one day, it looks like I just switched. But no, I've been playing with the idea, battling with it internally. And then something gives me that, okay, let's, it's, it's, you could do it, it's, it's time. And that's what it was for music when I started getting paid for features. So Musma, shout out to Musma from like New York, you know, paid me, I think like 1,000, either between 500 and 1,500 for a feature. And I wasn't even yet an artist. So I'm like, ah, I know how many phones I got sell to make one five. And these guys paying me this. So it was signal, it was signaling plus, um, um, the boys from BBNZ, um, Alvin, Kwame, um, baby, them boys, um, they were working with, um, Lauren Hill. Yeah. And she, you know, she requested I be booked. They arranged to get me booked to play at PlayStation Theater, I think in 2015. So imagine like, I'm not yet an artist, like professionally. I'm st- I'm still running Phone Trader. I'm still coming to Pulse to do- Yeah, that's the first Interview time about tech and blah, blah, blah. And now I'm in PlayStation Theater performing- Banku Lies and, you know, uh, I think some other song. You know, and I, rem- I remember very vividly, like I didn't even have, it didn't even, like when I went to rehearsal, it was like Stone Boy and L, E-L, Rep, G-H. Yeah. They, 
they spent so much time rehearsing that I didn't even have time to rehearse. I'm okay, what would I have even rehearsed? There's nobody say like I get plenty of songs to sing. True. So my boy OC again, OC came with me. Good Life came with me. Um, I remember, you know, telling them at the embassy, well, I don't know if this invite is real, though, but I don't know whether they won't run me street though. They say, yeah, the invite is real, they gave my visa. So I think it was those things those signals, like, Flor, if you're performing at King's Theatre before you're even an artist, come on. You get me? You're getting paid to do that. You're getting paid for verses. Yeah. Um, my boy, my boy Meister was working at uh, Vodafone and then Tonaton, and they would have, um, and my friends in school had started Echo, so they were doing activations for brands and they would then put me on those unit tours and I would do those unit tours. Yeah. Many of those unit tours were humiliating because like it was in the time of a zone two and dance hall oh. and I was making... <laughs> I've been following this lady, I've been telling her that, that, that. So like when you're performing, they just they look you like... I remember one show, like they literally... Ah, wait... Away and like I brought money out of my pocket and shared so that hey, and then I I left. But I just done it. It's like just blindly just doing it, not knowing where it's going. But I could see those signals, those signals, those signals. And you know, 2015, Sako Death Show, yeah. he brings me out. I perform skin tight with Ifia. As soon as I come out, everybody. Body goes crazy. I perform bank lies and skin tight. Then I do 69 with easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just, from, I get booked for Ghana independence shows by Aquaba UK in the UK. Like, so when I go do those shows and I see the amount of people coming out to do those shows and singing the songs, like this is how I was performing. But I don't know if you know this song, but if you get then they'll sing it. I don't know if you know this song. Then go couple of this. I was like, wow. So by the time I came back from that trip, I knew that okay, I was onto something. And all the money I made, I remember giving my then manager his car and the rest of the money. I used it to shoot videos. I used it to shoot whole up video, sample your video, anointing video, came back with 20 pounds. I mean, I, I still had my hustle. Um, yeah. But then you were, back then when you, when you were just dropping and you were climbing and all that, it didn't look like you were penny pinching. The final product, because I remember then you were, it looked new. You had like novelty all over. Yeah, because it was, it was novelty. Like, is has there been any artist pre Mr. Easy or till date that's coming out and wearing a farmer's hat in a music video? If they, if anybody carried that, if you chase him, come on. <laughs> Do you understand? But it was real. It was it was it was real. It was it, it is novel and you can't, you know, and I thank God that there's there's a there's a there's God's favor on, on it, but there's a genius about all the stuff I was making. It was, it is, it is genius. It's, it's phenomenal. It's legendary, legendary music. There's no music like that. There's no, there's no music that sounds like, like that. There's no music. It's like, you can't compare it to anything. You can say, oh, maybe it sounds like this. Like, it doesn't sound like anything. It's, you could you could tell there's familiarity in like dance hall. You're hearing some trees, some high life hip life influences, but like you can't compare it with with anything. I remember going for Ghana meets Niger, yeah, in Ghana, and that's where I met Olamide. And Olamide was trying to sign me. He's like, "Yo, I sign you." I remember he's told me the deal. That might have been somebody had tried to sign me in. Boo was the first person to sign me. Akon's brother. Akon, no boo. He was, he, 
they drove to the studio and he had like a white Rolls Royce in Accra. He was yeah. the first person to try and sign me. Why didn't uh, you take that? I was like, I've, do, I've not even figured out what I'm doing. Like it's too early to sign. So I didn't sign to Boo. Um, and the first person to try and sign me in... You know what's so funny? Like I tried to get earlier, I tried to get signed to Osagi. Yeah. Um it's an agency then. Yeah. Like Meta. Yeah. She was a Osage Okumpola. Yeah. Osarens now. Osage yeah. Osarens. Yeah. And you know, it was it, it didn't work out. Like and then I tried to, to young six tried to take me to Storm. And I started recording at Tola Odunsi studio. That's where I met Carlo and we'll record with with OT. And and then Olamide tried to sign me, gave me a deal. Um but I just knew that I hadn't totally understand totally understood the business or what I was even doing, Seth. Like you're not even yet a musician, like Everything was just happening so fast. So, and one thing I knew was I wanted my freedom. Yeah. I would take freedom over anything. Was freedom why you started Empire, Empower? Yeah. Freedom is why I started Empower because like, obviously it was, I, I, from then I started my label, Banku Music. Yeah. So it was Banku Music and then it needed to be a bigger conversation and, um, Banku Music, I then shut down Banku Music and started Empower. What could Empower do that Banku Music could not afford you? First off, like, I wanted to take an investment. So I could have taken an investment into Banku Music and there was Banku Music Delivery. Actually, Joe Boy was first signed to Banku Music. Okay. But then when I started the Empower program, so what drove me to start the Empower program was like, I was just having this idea because I'd been in the VC program um, for 40 NG. So I was just having this idea that you could, artists can be like startups and you could invest in, but I didn't know how it would work. So when the opportunity came to um, do the Empower program, you know, that was the first, that first Empower program was sponsored by Bed Power. Yeah. Um, it just made it would it just gave a perfect way to sort of like test this thing out. So I'm like, oh, and then the Empower brand just came became bigger than myself very quickly when I announced the program. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? I actually don't even want a label that would just be me. So you just happened naturally and I wanted proper structure so I was like okay Banku Music J- Joe Boy moved to Banku from Banku Music to Empower I was the only one in, in Banku Music and then I just said you know what let's just put everything on let's not push two brands let's just have one brand and then like Empower what Empower stands for like even from the name has it been everything you've, you wanted it to be Empower that is it's been, you know, when you have ideas, I was talking about this thing this morning, and then you realize that you need to pay bills. Yeah. And so the first Empower program, we blew like $1.1 million. Just giving like, there's no, there's no, Show me one Afrobeat artist that has given $1.1 million to other artists. This is like 20, 20, 2019. I just put out Accra to Lagos. No, Lagos to London. Like on your second album. Show me one artist by their second album. Like I've not even, I never even sell out O2. I don't need to feel me. Like, sometimes I mean, like, in hindsight, maybe I would just put that money for my pocket, you know, <laughs> put that for my own music. But it was, it was more than that. It meant more to do that. Yeah. You know, when we, 
you know, even work, you know, working with and even learning like you you give some artists money, grants, five thousand dollar grant, you pay the five thousand dollar to them or three thousand dollars, then you don't see the song. Baba get rent to pay. You give him three thousand dollars to shoot video. Baba don't go pay in rent. Go chop. You feel me? So even study. So I started learning. Empower. I started learning. So empower has has been more than I thought it would be to answer your question. But I've learned. I keep learning so much. Like learning that between you know, okay, giving all these artists these grants and then realizing that oh, after I've given you money to make a song. You've gone to make it in the studio. Then you've gone to sign the song to somebody. Then we can monetize the song. So, oh, okay, now we have to make sure what the ones releasing the song. So that's how Empower went from being a program. So it was Banco Music and Empower being a program. It went from being a program to being the company. Because now we had to protect the IP. We had to put out the music. We had to make the YouTube channel. We had to... so. It was out of necessity. And so I'm like, why we will have two different companies? Let's just put it into one. And a lot of the artists from that first Empower program are doing so great right now. Even artists you don't even know that were part of that program. And then the second Empower program. But realizing that, you know, it was, it was like 95.5. We give you $5,000. We charge you 5% distribution fee. How are you able to convince investors about this? And that's one part of it. But I'm also interested in like how you how do you convince people to part with their money for you? You did it with Empower, found people to fund what is literally an experiment. Yeah. And now and you've done it with other with multiple things that you've created. Like how are you able to do that? Because like, you know, I think it goes to like, when they say like, if people know that you will deliver more than anything, then they will trust you. Okay. First of all, I think my mama, they pray. There's, there's the grace of God on my head, all day in my head, no cap. But beyond that, it's like when people know that you will deliver, it's like, I will not run away with your money. That's one thing. One thing is, I don't want somebody to come and say, easy owes me. Like, I would rather borrow money to pay you than for you to walk around. Like, I'm the type to catch you stealing my money and then fire you and then leave the money with you because I'm unsure whether, like, we didn't do proper accounting. There's been times when I've paid an artist more than they should have gotten because we didn't do the right accounting. So rather than leave that hanging, I overpay you and make you know that I overpaid you. I know they, I know chop your money. Then also the program was bringing, it was bringing value to the Bed Power brand. Okay. So it was bringing value, even though like it was not, like go and watch those videos. You see sponsored by Bed Power. And I had just, I done a marketing campaign for Bed Power and then I invested in Bed Power. So it's like, you know, it became like a marketing expense and it was fun. And I delivered on it. Like, you know, if you had to pay Diplo to fly all the way to South Africa to come and mentor 10 kids that are not, that are at the very beginning of their careers, how much would you have paid Diplo? Diplo was there. If you had to pay J5, how much would you have paid J5? If you had to pay Jules, Maporisa, so the the program brought more value than the amount of money that was spent on it in terms of visibility for the brand. And in terms of, oh, we are a betting company, but we're doing more than just collecting money from boys. We're also putting back, just like the National Lottery puts yeah. back to movies, film, um, you know, funding people going for Olympics, all of that. So, it's not like I just convinced you to drop money. It's like there's value for you also, but there's the there's the favor of God there and there's the trust that, okay, Easy will be able to deliver this thing. And when you, so you've done this across multiple companies and you found success and people would, 
you know, attribute that to genius. So when we talk about Easy and who he is and what he represents, people will be like, ah, that guy's got five heads. Like he has, he's hacked life. What do you know that we don't? Man, as I said earlier, oi, day my head. Like I think <laughs> that's very, like I know this, like I'm not even, I'm not even fucking around. I know this. Trust me when I see how it happens. Like, I know this. Trust me. Like, I know this. Like, before I was born, my mom would tell you she knew she was, she knew she was about to have like a great guy. Like, she told me like early. Nobody say now, nah, just to give you Zobo like Troy. Wait, hey, early enough, Troy. Say, no, no, no. I'm telling you like straight up. Like, I always knew I was different from day one. Like, I remember like one time I took money from my uncle's my uncle to do a business and then the business went south and then he was chasing me for the money and to the point where he went to report me to my mom and dad and I was so pissed. I'm like, when I collected the money from you, you didn't report me to my mom and dad. Why are you not going to my mom and dad? And I was so embarrassed that my dad had to pay. I remember sitting down in his house with his wife and telling two of them that you people just... You people just fucked up. You just lost an opportunity because I'm going to be a great guy and you're not going to be able to work with me. Imagine person come borrow money from you. Say you won't do business. The business no come work. You they pursue him for months for the money. He no pay you. He no get money to pay you. You can't go in papa collect the money. Insta get balls. So can't they tell you, say, you just fucked up because I'm going to be great. And you're not going to be able to be in my story. That's the kind of Delulu that I had. It's just like this confidence. Just knowing. You know, so I think I was delusional. And I'm I'm trying to get to that level of Delulu. You know, or some people might call it self-belief. When nothing else, you don't see anything. Like when I was... Selling phones in Computer Village. Some people were looking at me like, oh, he's 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 got a master's degree, Coventry University, and he's selling phones in Computer Village. Like, looking down on me. But for me, my in my mind, I was doing, like, the greatest thing ever. I was like, yo, very soon I'll be, like, slot. Yeah. That's, that's, I was only seeing phone traders, like, slot, car phone warehouse. I wasn't seeing, so I was, I wasn't seeing where I was at the time. And so that's been, always been it for me that I have a way of, I do somehow I focus on where I'm going that I even don't see where I am. Almost very delusional, very, very delusional. That's why like I didn't take those record deals that were because I was like, mm, I think I deserve more than that. But why do you deserve more than that? Like why? You're not selling records. You're not doing but okay, yeah, but because in my head I didn't I couldn't understand why you can't see that I deserve more than that. Because in my head I can see so why can't you see? Something must be wrong with you. I'd even take offense in that. It's that delusion that keeps um, driving me. It's the strength. And the times I felt most vulnerable, weakest, are when I start to see reality more than delusion. Where, when really reality overtakes delusion, I start to feel low. The first time I, f- I you know, I've... The first time I, and I, I didn't know what to do with myself because I was now seeing things for how they are. I am the t- I was I was the type of guy to have nothing in the bank account and be in debt, but still be telling somebody that yeah yeah yeah, I'm gonna take. You know I remember like yeah I remember like wanting to sign the Rock Nation wanted to sign Skin Tight yeah and. And I was talking to Wiz, big shout out to, to Wiz. And, you know, when the deal came and Wiz was saying, um, I mean, if they give you life-changing money, it's something around life-changing money. And the money at that time, in reality, to where I was in my life, the money they offered would have been interpreted as life-changing money. But to me, because of where I thought I was going, where I, where I was seeing myself, I didn't think it was life changing money, so I didn't do the deal when I spoke, and and and, and I didn't do that deal. And I remember telling OCA, I'm like, 
that's not life changing money. So I can't do that deal. And with advancements, with improvements in quality of existence, with success, both material, financial, and the rest of them, how does that impact this delusion? Does it dampen it? Does it does it erode it? You would think that the more I'm delusional and I get what I want, that it will keep the delusion will increase. But after some point, especially when it's like you're going around the same place, you start to face reality. Yeah. And you face reality so much, you start to forget the delusion. And then you stop believing in yourself. And once that self-doubt comes, it's it's the worst thing. Self-doubt is the worst thing. Because you now you're now seeing that this is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's like feeling you're the best, and then you try and sell, you try and do a show, and you think, yeah, you're the best. You're 2,000 people are going to show up. <laughs> and it did to the show. And only like 20 tickets you don't sell. No matter how delusional you, it's like reality facing you. You need to be a next level of delusion to say, those people don't know. Like, you need to be on that next one. Yeah. Okay. And your album the evil genius. Yeah. The first marketing communication I got from this project, I had a a lot of things to say, but the one that picked me out was you, people, was you saying this project was something to also, to also like address the notion about you that you've got like this, I don't know, this wand, this, I don't know, this reputation for being too shrewd. I was like, I'm telling you, like, I don't think it is front face. I think, I think a lot of people don't like me. Why do you think so? I like you. A lot of people in this room like you. And there's, there's no, like, right. I used to have a problem with that, but now I don't have a problem with that. Why do you think people, a lot of people don't like you? What, what, what has driving you to that conclusion? Because like, you know, even from like, running, do, even from like, I've not been running in power, like you know, Ikena has been running in power for like yeah. two, three years. Yeah. But like, every time, I remember wanting to clear this record. I remember this record, there was this record that was supposed to come out at some point and it was, it was a Tiwa Savage record featuring Joe Boy. And I think Young John was on the record. And obviously Joe Boy was dropping a song like, it was during COVID, he was dropping a song this week. So obviously if he's dropping a song this week, there needs to be time before the next song yeah. drops. Yeah. And that was just it. Just, you know, Ikena telling me, oh, we can't clear this record because it's one week space. And whoever was handling that drop was telling Tiwa that, oh, Easy is just blocking this thing. That's how it is, blah, blah, blah. To the point where Tiwa had to call me and I had to just explain to Tiwa and say, oh, Joe Boy just dropped. He's dropping his song the week before. And that's why. And she's like, oh, I understand. But that's not what I was hearing. I'm like, it's pretty simple. You know, or people expecting so much from me, like, because we've worked together and like, like you expect me to be, to kiss your ass for a thousand years. You know, and it's not, and I'm not just talking about within music. I'm talking about just generally. Yeah. It's like, if I wasn't successful, were you, are you, are you call it's like sometimes are you calling all the people you went to high school with? Like or you went to you are you calling do you have on your phone number all the people you went to uni with? 
No, no. I no. Okay, so now because we went to uni together or because we did this thing together, you're supposed to have 100% access to me. And if I don't pick your call, I'm this bad person. Like, no, it's not, that, that's impossible. You feel me? So, but I, ha- I have come into contact. I have had a lot of situations where I realized that, oh, some people don't like me. And when I ask why, they can't, it's like there's no evidence. They can't articulate. They can't articulate. So I just see, okay, maybe because I'm weird and I'm a loner and I love doing things alone. Or like when I when I post shit, like people go out of their way to some people go out of their way to wanna to wanna hate. Or like the some blogs go out of their way to wanna always change some narrative or you know, and it's like, oh, he doesn't deserve it. Like, so I think that's the thing, actually. I think a lot of people think I don't deserve a lot of things. So it upsets them. And it's just, you know, if you're hating me for the grace that's on my head, don't hate me, hate my makeup because it's, this is not me. This is the oil on my head. I think you also like open yourself up from, being an artist to being within the realm of a so when you think about like this person and you think of what they're known for yeah. they're known for your entrepreneurship you're known for your beautiful music yeah you're, also, you're known for the career you've built you've not you're known for how much of an of a high achiever you you are but at the same time when you introduced your love life into the equation, <laughs> it moved you. <laughs> it extended you into cel- into like extra, you're a celebrity, of course. Yeah. But now it's extending you to lifestyle, emotional celebrity status. So you're no more an artist. You're now, you're now regarded as part of a union that people consider to be special. So, so is that is that is that reason and, and sometimes is that reason, is that reason you, enough is that reason enough for you to like is that is that reason to dislike me? Yeah, but fuck because this, you feel but, like okay, but fuck this okay, guy. This guy why why like, do you have so much? <laughs> yes, yeah, like and and I and I understand if if I were you, I'll hate me. You feel me? It's like I don't want to go too deep, but when the grace of God was on Joseph, yeah. His brothers hated him. Okay. It's like it just comes with some, like that's how I've made peace with it. I'm not saying that that's the absolute truth. I'm saying that's my truth. That's how I've made peace with it. Because it's like, okay, who be this guy? We don't even know who this guy be. He just go Ghana. We don't know whether he be Ghanaian. The next thing, just they sing some songs. Then income blow, no godfather. Like no fucking godfather. Like, I didn't pay anybody to get my music on radio. Fab from Sky Radio put my music on Sound City, Sound City charts, Ghana charts. You know, I know those people who, you get me, and all of a sudden, he's everywhere. Boom, boom, boom. Um, DJ Spino, boom, 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 boom. This, you know, and back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back, back. It's like, okay, he's doing, and then they start hating. They're like, okay, his music is sounding the same. Even you, with your, with your <laughs> fucking <laughs> typographical. I, I, I was about your performance, not your music, your performance. Your it's like, oh, this, this performance, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like, fuck you, man. <laughs> it was just holding me from like tweeting to you and say, fuck you, bro. <laughs> you know, um, it's, and so it's like, okay, he's not even a great performer. It's like, okay, he's not a great performer. His voice is not the best voice. Oh, this is the lyrics he's singing. Okay, all his songs sound the same. Change your, change your music. Okay, it's like, okay, now we're going to cancel you because you say Ghana music has influence over Nigerian music. Okay, we've canceled him. Thank God we've canceled him. He's dead. His career will never rise again. He's finished. Oh yeah, let's celebrate. He's 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 finished. But like God wasn't done with me. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not even I couldn't take all that energy. And it was the progression. God was telling me, 
time to get out of Lagos. It's time yeah. to go to London. Lagos to London. Boom. And like God just gave me like surrender, London town, property. Um, and that album, one of the greatest Afrobeat. Sh- I don't even want to sh- call it. I don't even. I don't even want to call it. Short Skirt was on the first okay, the project. First, yeah, I don't even want to call it. Like it's the it's one of the best musical albums ever made in human history. Like such perfection, from the intro to the Brother Shaggy skits. Like it's it's so lush, so proper. You feel me? And it's like. Okay, yeah, he's in he's in London. He's doing his thing, and then for some reason, I'm in London doing my thing. People are upset. Oh yeah, he's in Lo- in thing saying you know they part of us. If he just day London, they doing thing. Okay, making day London, they doing thing now. We no go send them, bro. I did James Gordon, zero, no news carried it. Yeah, and my bad because like I didn't understand how the game worked that you had to pay the blogs, and like. As you're doing things outside, you have to report it back home. But I just thought like just journalism, like people, I didn't know that's part of like learning. I didn't know that there was a system behind those things. So it's like some people interpreted it as he's even so arrogant. He doesn't even want us to report it. But me, I was looking at it like, why are these people not reporting it? I don't James Gordon. Nobody reported it. Like I'm like first, I was Apple Music Up Next artist as an independent artist signed to my own label before they started picking Afrobeat. Like after me was Bad Bunny. Yeah. I'm the first African up next global artist. Boom. Period. I'm touring with J Balvin. Boom. Femme. Period. I'm doing all these things, but I'm doing it not because I want you people to say it. I'm doing it because like I'm advancing my career. I'm loving the, the, the journey. But I'm like, why are these people not talking about this? Like I was most streamed artist on Spotify for like maybe a year or two, like Nigerian artist or monthly followers. Or I don't know what, what it is, but it's like, yeah, we're not going to talk about it. So it's like, and then we go make those songs, you know, billboard cover, me, David O and Tiwa. Nobody drops. It's time pass. Like nobody even wants to talk about the success of Empower. It's like, oh yeah, how many artists they even get? So I like I, I I would hear all these things and I'll feel like, why? And now you're even confirming it. It's like, okay, yeah, ain't they doing your thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then next thing, boom. Like, why has somebody's relationship <laughs> got to upset people? Like, I don't understand. Like. I still don't understand, like... Yeah, but, uh, well, I don't know. I wasn't upset personally, but when you look at the generality of comments around it, they're like, who is this guy? Why is he... Wh- why does he up have this? till tomorrow, bro. And how is that colored? Shall we, this part, like, introducing the... Bring, introducing, bringing your world, bringing your world to the world. Yeah. How is that colored how you're perceived and and what you do? How is that colored? How have you seen it color it? it? I think, you know, some people have to be in the hood and they're in, people are dropping dead every day and then that inspires what they're singing about. And that's what people buy as entertainment. You know, so I've realized that I am into like my life is entertainment to people, if, whether I like it or not. Like for from twenty twenty one, I was trying to hide. And imagine like being a celebrity, but not wanting to be in the limelight. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to talk to any artist again. You know, the other day I was I was going. I wanted to reach out to um, Odumodu. Yeah, like two days ago. Yeah, that's a beautiful. Place. I saw him in. Um, in Kigali. Yeah. By the way. We were, we were together there. Oh, you were together. By the way, let's just say my company, Chop Life Gaming, was one of the sponsors of Trace Awards. We yeah. made that happen. Yeah. And Bed Power was one of the sponsors of Trace Awards. We made that happen. In case you don't know, you know now. Shout out to you. 
Shout out to me. <laughs> like an Agama Lisa fall down. Yeah. <laughs> we made that shit happen. So yeah. everybody we watch that thing, you know, guys thank me. You feel me? Shout out to Olivier <laughs> before he fights me. Yeah. <laughs> and Sam and everyone on Trace. Yeah. That's I, I, that's one of the best I watch shows ever. I think so, it's, it's very important. Yeah. So you were trying to reach out Yeah, to I was trying to reach out to Odumodu because I, he clearly hit me up and he's like, oh, easy, I want Odumodu to do this song. So... I, for, I didn't save his name as Odumodu. I saved his name as Violence. Because when I saw him, I was like, why you like Violence too much? And so I was looking Odumodu. I couldn't find it on my contact. So I went to my DMs and I saw our interaction. And I was like, geez. Like I was just running away from even because I, I was just running away because I was like, everything is going to be interact, inter, interpreted as something else. And I'm like running away from fame. I'm running away from people, you know, and I did that from 2021 January until, until January this year, just running away from people. Did it hurt when people, when people spoke so publicly and, said you were not worthy of your union? I think the first thing to realize is like when the whole issue with me being cancelled, yeah. even till tomorrow, I see people come on my profile and they're still throwing hate. Oh yeah, you said that. Like, and I'm like, fam, really? Like, let it go, bro. It's not that I'm like, really? You... This energy take you to your local politician where they where they run you street. You feel me? Like did yeah. I I didn't kill anybody. I said I said what I said, mm -hmm. and it's and it's like okay, I said it how many years ago. If that's the reason you hate me, then you hate me for something else. It's deeper than that. And realizing that just made me feel free. Okay. And that's how I look at, that's the lens to which I look at everything. Because I was seeing guys that I was saying hello to, coming out to say, yeah, fuck Mr. Easy. And I was like, ah, how? Bro, you could have called me and said, yo, Easy, I just saw, I just seen this interview. You shouldn't have said that. This is what I advise you to do. You get me? But every, it just became a thing. Like, yeah, 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 let's all band together. And that's why in my song, We Day, I say, Twitter fingers steady showing fake love. Because it's crowd mentality. It's not, it's not even like when they see you in real person, they won't even come and say, hey, we want to take a picture. It's like, it's trendy to hate you. And now it's like for clicks. And so when, when you know that the love or the hate is for clicks, it makes you just realize that, you know what, I'm even blessed to be able to invoke something. There's people making art and nobody's, and their life, nobody's caring about whether they jump or sit. It's like they're invisible. So if you're there and people are hating you, just even thank God that you're visible and sure. people are loving you. Love and hate is just, is acknowledgement of your existence. Not like you should go to find love or hate, but it's, is acknowledgement. Like, if you walk out, enter this room and you pass, you you know it's possible for you to come and not realize this table was here. And later, when you leave, they'll say, oh, did you see the blue table? You're like, blue, there was no blue table. You missed it. So it's a blessing that, oh, you can't miss it. But I'm a human being at the end of the day, you, and that's what the evil genius is about. It's like, I'd gotten so... You know when you go and search and Google, search yourself on Twitter yeah. and you see what people are saying and you just see a lot of shit. Like even when I drop a tech, like people are saying, oh yeah, you know, suppose they do music again. Like a tech was a good one. Focus, okay. on, focus on your business. No, do, like who are you to tell me what to do? Like fuck you, bro. Like I, I'm, I'm even going to start like tweeting back and say, oh, fuck you, bro. <laughs> and that's the energy of the evil genius is accepting when you go through seeing all these things, hearing all these things about yourself and it starts to put you down and you, you ask yourself, why is this thing putting me down? 
What are people's opinion about me putting me down? What are people's opinion of my relationship putting me down? What are people's op- like it's okay if it was just the music because you understand when you put out music, you're putting a part of yourself out there. But it's beyond the music. It's like, oh, see your trouser. Your trouser is rubbish. Oh, so look at his skin. His his skin. They this thing. It's like you can. It starts to get to you. It's personal. Yeah, you could see that this is personal, and you 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 start trying to change this narrative to be positive, and you, it's a never ending battle. You can't you can't win. You can't win against the mob. And the only way I could set myself free was to accept it. Like, you think I'm ugly. Okay, fuck, fuck the fresh. I'm ugly. But I've got too much money on me. Can't you see? Not only their talk, we plenty. They can't even call an army. These silly niggas can't afford me. I'm out in a jet with my girl. And that's not the flex. Man never tried to impress. Man never tried to finesse. New postcode, I changed my address. That means you can't even see me. That's from We Day. That's the second verse of, of We Day. Yeah. It's real. It's not, it's not Lamba. It's real. New postcode. I changed my address. Where are they live? You can't see me, bro. I'm gone. I'm no more in Sun Gold or Ogun State. I'm gone. I can't even tell you where I live. You feel me? And I'm, I'm on my birthday, my last birthday, I was sitting there and I'm, I was literally out in a jet with my girl. And I was like, geez. And I wasn't posting. I'm like, geez, I'm actually in a jet with my girl and I'm not even thinking of posting or snapping this shit because it's, it's become normal. That's why I say I never try to impress. It's your reality. It's my reality. You know, so that's how, that's how, that's how it goes. And it's like on Oluwajo, my mom comes and she's, she that starts was, and she's was, like, that was touching. you know, she's like that song. If, there was a time I was going from France to, to London. My mom was sick. And I that, was hearing that song. I was playing that, that song. That was the first time you ever saw your mom. Yeah. Yeah. I was playing that song and I was, I was crying like, <laughs> like a baby. I was crying in that train. I had my shades on. I was just crying, crying, hearing my, my mom's voice. And that's, that song. And I'm like, tell my mommy that I go bear the cost. Because like, you know, imagine your, you know, my mom had done two surgeries for two different things. And, Instead of her being happy that, oh, she's fine. Everything is fine. She will, every time she sees me, she'll be apologizing. She's like, oh, sorry, Tosin. Like, I'm so sorry for spending your money. This is not what you should spend money on. You should spend this money on enjoyment. You should spend it on doing, you know, surgery for me. And I, I didn't even realize that these things were getting to me. And on that song is the first time I'm like, come on, man. Tell my mommy, say... I go bear the cost. My friends tell me I don't change because I know they pick their call. Facts. So vex for me because I don't follow them on Instagram. Facts. It's hard to know person will love me for real because that's how I was feeling. I swear to God, I feel lonely with people around me. So even when you go out and you're everybody, you're at the club and everybody's coming to hail you and you're on stage, you still feel, you still feel lonely. Um, I get problems at the face. Tell me now who I go. Yeah, and my pastor say go pray as long as I send them cash. Um, and so I start to speak my reality on this album, then becomes my therapy. As I travel across Africa, setting up businesses, doing, you know, doing amazing things, sitting in rooms I never thought I would be on. Like, why is an Afrobeat artist? sitting with a central bank compliance team pitching a business like tell me how it how how, how it intersects tell me how it intersects you know and i'm doing things i never thought i would do and so i'm just thankful to god and that's what i speak about on zuzu lakate and on chop time no friend that's why i say Chop time, no friend. If I chop my woman, I know they look another man's face. It was like all this chit chat. It addresses what you were just talking about. All this chit chat, like I chop my woman. I know they look another <laughs> man's face. Like waiting consign me. Talk your shit. You know, if I chop my mula, I know they, and that's me saying everything I touch, they enter because literally I said, okay, you know what? I'm 
I'm going to go do, I'm going to go try my hands at doing business. And I became very successful having business businesses in like 10 African countries and real businesses and bringing value to my investment group. And I'm like, I don't have the, I don't have the, the waiting they call that thing. I don't have the experience or the wealth or the, the credentials to achieve what I'm achieving. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, anything I touch the end time, continental, sentimental and monumental. Like I started in power with no experience of running a music business. And Joe Boy is still one of, one of the most beautiful artists in the world. If you, if you don't think so, like his, his song that was even side song, We No Make album, ended up in, on Bad Bunny's <laughs> album. That's a throwaway song. You know, as when I signed Fave, she was she was, she was probably not even making up to two k a year when when we signed her. Put eighty, you know, put eighty k on that, blew up. I still feel Fave is one of the most talented singers in the world. Okay. Unfortunately, the deal the deal ended. I I, I wanted to renew that deal. I I I put like I put down a figure that was crazy. Why do you think they never signed? The deal has ended. The deal has ended. They want to go a different direction. It's like if your rent expire for your house, if you decide to say, mm, I want to stay this house, this house good. Or if you even decide to say, you know what? I want to move to, an, yeah, I want to move down the road. I just want to even go down the road. And that's the freedom within Empower. It's like freedom. Freedom to put out music when you want. Freedom to leave when your deal expires without us fighting you or holding you and say, no, you know, if you leave or trying to boycott you, like your deal has expired, you can go, we give you a deal. We'll give you an option to stay. You don't want to stay. Go, you know, and it's not hate. It's not us trying to boycott you anywhere. No, you feel me? I feel you. I feel bits of the world happened. Yeah. But you were ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. You were doing Afrobeats to the world before it became Afrobeats to the world. Yep. Seeing the work you've done, seeing how you have pursued, you know, the exporting your music, exporting your art, planting, uh, or rather going through cultural exchanges in multiple markets. Yeah. Seeing it become ground zero for our music now as the most rudimentary thing anybody can do. Yeah. What do you think? It makes me realize that I'm a fucking genius. Okay. Facts. Like I fucking went and did an Afrobeat song with Legendary Beats, made it in my bedroom. FYI, all that melody, I did all the melody on that song. We changed it to Spanish. Seven times platinum, probably more than seven times platinum now. Latin Grammys, like I've, I've, I've performed in Barcelona four times this year. Wow. Um, and I did this in 2019. You feel me? Yeah. London Town is not an Afrobeat song. It's grime. <laughs> yeah. That's not Afrobeat, my guy. You feel me? General Bernie, when I did... Um, I remember performing at Coachella and when I did that song with um, Rudimental, yeah. Let Me Leave, I wrote that song. It mm-hmm. wasn't it. Like when you see, most of the songs you see Mr. Easy feature on, especially when it's cross, it's not like they just call me for somewhere. When the studio I wrote, as I walked through it, and then um, Anne-Marie, sang it in a vocal because I knew like it needed a female vocals and the guys from Rudimental thought she would kill it and she killed it. And then when I write the song, I also stay on it as a featured artist. Let me leave. You know, um, and all this, all this stuff I did out of like enjoying it, you know, independently, very important, independently, not signed to no label, not having any 20 year, experienced manager that was, if this was us just saying, we want to do this. I want to do this. Just following, following. I was 
I was with Ellie Golden in 2018 in studio. Yeah. Song does not come come out I like remember. FYI before I will be I will be to the world I will yeah. be to the world. I had the the first number one iTunes, the first like Nigerian. I made Oh my god in the studio when I was making Lagos to London. That's when I made Oh my god. Yeah. The song that I had Nicki like I had a song with Nicki Minaj and it and um Diplo and I'd see comments oh it's not Mr. Easy songs is is Diplo song but you can see there Major Lazer and Mr. Easy featuring Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj I wrote that song in in London number one on iTunes USA you know Joe Boy Sip Alcohol went top top 40 Billboard R&B charts the fact that like you you know it's like count your that's why I say um in Chop Time No Friend is about r- encouraging people to write their wins. You don't need to let other people write it for you. Yeah. It's like we waiting for people to tell our stories. Like to tell the story of our legends or Nigeria. We're waiting for somebody to come and do the no. story. No, you go write the story. Yep. You tell your story. And it's like I'm telling my story, but I'm telling it on this album, track by track. And for the first time ever, by the way, this is the first time ever you're having an African music album with African art yeah. merging together where I'm commissioning individual works by these artists and the works are inspired directly by the music and we're doing exhibitions. Bro, I was laughing at myself. I'm like, how am I doing exhibition in Accra in London? Next saw, is gonna I, be. I, I saw the Accra when I saw the London one. Yeah, next is gonna be in December, in uh, in Lagos, and then we're gonna go Dubai, um, next year. Maybe one more place, and it's like just so wonderful that you could. I just feel so humble. It's just God, like I said, all day in my head, to be able to see all this happen, and I don't need you to report it. The only like this album, I want people to know that I've dropped an album because I think the album is epic, and what this album is doing, just like what Come On Baby did in introducing people in the Latin American world to Afrobeat. That's what Come On Baby did. You had an Afrobeat song on an album that had the biggest Latin American artists. Yeah. So I don't need you to. I don't need when you say. Oh, why is he calling himself a legend? I'm a fucking legend. Like I, I did that shit, and I don't need you to tell me. I don't need you to report it for me to know it's true. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm just basking it and grateful to God that it's happened. And now I think we've done like an hour thirty minutes. Let me free you. Oh. You said you've had a long day. Yeah, yeah. We could do this for a long time. So much, so much to talk about. But yeah, thank you so much. And and. But just before you go, just before you go. Yeah, I think I'm in a very truthful, truthful, like, I don't give a fuck mood. So if you have anything you want to ask that's been on your mind, yes. controversial or not, <laughs> speak. <laughs> so I'll just go very direct on this one. Mm-hmm. When people see you and and this one might not be very tied to music, but mm. it sort of colors it now. Yeah. When people see you and the union, the romantic union you've made, yeah, and then they say, Mr. Easy benefits off of, has rather is benefiting off of your Tedola name. Yeah. Does that in any way get in your draw? You draw. What do you mean in your draw? Does it does it stress you? Does it do you itch? Like I said, this is not the first time. Like it's it's like I said. It's like I've been seeing this since I was making music, and I changed. I changed the sound. That I slow down Afrobeat with Bankulize. Yeah. When we were having all that first. Yes. Fast tempo. Yeah. I slow down that shit. Yes, you did. You know, with Jules, Jules on the production, riding on those beats, slowing it down. And you, you, you're not, you could still tweet that right now and 
you could tweet that right now and people are going to cuss you out and say, no, it's not, it's not easy that slow down that yeah, shit. It's I was, not easy. I, and, I, I was there. Yeah, it's yes, not. she did. <laughs> it's not easy and Jules that slow down this thing. They will argue with you and, and call some other names. You feel me? So it's, it's, it's a pattern and I, I guess it's what happens when people don't understand and they feel you do not deserve something because they, it happens so easily. It seems to happen so easily. But my dad told me something one day. He said, when you see a duck, actually it wasn't my dad. My dad had said it, but DJ Edu said it again. That's why it's come to me. When you see a duck on top of a, of a river, it's just like, it's not moving. It's just there. Yeah. But underneath, the duck is paddling, yeah. but you can't see it. True. But the duck never tells have have you ever seen a duck in the water and the duck told you, oh ma, this thing crazy, oh, the paddle, where are they paddle? Nah, nah, ducks are usually elegant. Even if you take, no matter the thing where you smoke, you if you smoke something where you say duck, they talk to you. <laughs> Nick, we know. <laughs> no, never. But when you see a duck speaking to you see ducks, they communicate. Yeah, they do. And they tell themselves what's happening under. Underneath the elegance and the ease. There's something happening behind the smiles. There's something. It takes a lot of work. And that's why I said, I get problems that they face. Tell me now who I go yan. Because everybody has struggles and be, be beneath all the, the, um, this, the ease. Behind every overnight heat was nights in the studio. Yeah. Behind every, oh, we just became a billionaire was loads of, failures and deaths and all of that. And I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful for everything, including my relationship. I'm grateful for everything, including the men, the mentorship of my father, my father-in-law. I'm grateful for everything, including the love of my wife. I'm grateful for everything, including the discipline from, from my dad. Yeah. And the fact that my dad till tomorrow, my dad still called me out. Two weeks ago, I went to see my parents and my dad still called me out to say, yeah, there's something you did I didn't like. It's, Baba still, they tell me off. Of course. Yeah, he don't sorry. give a fuck that, okay, you're Mr. Easy, so what? Can't wash plate, please. Baba, he goes still, <laughs> go still clear you. My dad is ex Air Force. He goes still, my dad feels still clear me, discipline me the right way. You yeah, feel me? You. And my mom. So I'm grateful for everything. So when people, when people talk and say these things, it's like, when I chop my woman, I know they look at another man's face. True. Sure. Straight up. And in all of this, just yeah. to wrap this up, in all of this, in in coming from where you've come from, it's been such a long growth, but it feels like it's still day one. Cause yeah, true. Evil, yeah, the evil genius is a reintroduction. Yeah. Like, th- what are you getting out of this? For you, for yourself, for Mr. Easy. For, not even for Mr. Easy, for Tosin Ajibadi. Is renewal. I'm f- I feel a renewal. I feel excited again. Okay. You know what? Bro, like, when I tell you I was bored 2019 after doing Dirty Rave, I was bored. I didn't want to do this shit again. I was just doing it because if I don't do it, what would people say? But I still managed to drop Nobody, the biggest song of 2020. Yeah. And Baby, I'm Jealous with King Promise, biggest song in Ghana of 2020. You know, and oh my God, like it still happened without me trying. In 2021, 2022, even 2022, I'd finished making the album. I go to South Africa to shoot Exit Video, the one with Soweto Gospel Choir. By the way, that's the most beautiful song out in the world. Beautiful. And I go to the studio and I record Patek. Any money where I get, at the flex, at the ball. My my first like proper, I'm a piano record, boom. And I like, ah, wow, something entered this year you know I didn't I, that song never hit top 50 Nigeria I don't think we need to look into that that's a, <laughs> another conversation for another day okay because it doesn't make any sense why that song wasn't a top 20 but if you sing that song anywhere people go sing them but we let's let's leave that for episode 2 yes please. but it is a renewal I feel renewed I feel blessed yeah um and even for empower, there's there's a renewed, like 
there's somewhere I want to take you to. I'm presently in Nigeria here because, you know, I'm hosting Willard Addis. Willard is the founder of Cobalt. Yeah. You know, I have a program with him on, on Monday we're trying to do. And this is this is someone who's who started a company that has paid over $12 billion to artists. To artists. And that's, he, this is first time in Nigeria and he's oh, coming and he's coming with me. And what we're trying to figure, I'm he's my he's my mentor. He's, we're trying to figure out what we can do. And it's just so it's just so beautiful that it's coming at this time where I've just dropped the album. And by the way, I've I've I feel like I feel like some I feel like Jay Z when he retired the first time. Okay. So I've retired right now. This is my retirement album. <laughs> I'm announcing here for the first time. Okay. <laughs> it says this is my first retirement. Okay. So I feel like how Jay Z felt the first time he he felt he retired, and I'm just blessed and thankful for freedom, for love, for everything that you know life has thrown thrown at me. All right, and we're grateful. We're grateful straight up for for what you have done and how you've impacted the world and improved on our silence and you know for a lot of people. Uh, you've given a lot of people something to aspire to. Sure. And that's beautiful. Sure. So, congratulations on your album. Thank you very much. What's your favorite song on the album? I think the one with your mom's voice. That's in touch. <laughs> the first one. Number Maybe one. Maybe if I just put my mom's voice for track. <laughs> <was 60. laughs> yeah, there are other records that have done it, but like yeah. that one, you can't get it out of your head. Yeah, that's a... You should need to listen to Mandela as well. You need to listen to Mandela. I'll pay, I'll pay more attention. Pay more attention to it. I will. Mandela. All right, man. Have a good one. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, guys. We're out. Bless. Thank you.